This is going to be a video about solving normal distribution questions. It's going to cover as many different parts of normal distribution as possible. So you might actually understand some parts and therefore you want to skip those easy bits. Uh, look at the comment section and, or the description section and look at the timestamps to see which section you want to review more specifically. Now I'm going to look at the sketch, so sketching a normal distribution curve, solving probability questions and expectation questions using the curve, and then solving these probability questions using your GDC calculator, and then finally doing inverse normal distribution. So try to pick which topic you want to discuss um, or look into even further. So this question is taken from page 208 from your book, it's from exercise 5a, and it's question 4. Um, we have a packet of coconut milk, Advertised to contain 250 ml, actually tests 75 packets, so this is important to know, and the contents are normally distributed, so this is the first hint that you need to use normal distribution. We have a mean of 255 ml and a standard deviation of 8 ml. So always write these values, so mean is 255 and standard distribution is 8 ml. And so the first question is usually sketching. So sketch doesn't have to be an, to be an accurate uh, graph. Just sketch a normal distribution diagram to illustrate this, indicating the mean and the volumes of the one, two, and three standard deviations of the mean. So it's really important that you include all of these. Because it's a sketch, you can't be as accurate as you want, but you should include all these values. Now, the best recommendation I have is to start listing all your 1, 2, and 3 standard deviations. So I started with my mean, and then I went on to add the standard deviations. So I added 1 standard deviation, 2 standard deviation, and 3 standard deviations, and then I subtracted them on this side. So we do all three. And then try to decide what scale you need to use in your x-axis for these values. What is the best scale? I picked a scale of 5, so I start with 255 and then I add and subtract 5 on both sides, and therefore this is what I came up with. And so we have this graph where I clearly show where the lines are. So I've shown where the mean is and where my first and deviation, second and third are on each side. I've labeled my graph and at this moment you guys should not be concerned with the y-axis label you just need to be concerned with the x-axis um, unless you're graphing two normal distributions then you should be concerned about the height and so for sketching always make sure that your numbers are uh, symmetrical to the mean or the standard deviations are symmetrical to the mean so the distance to the mean is equal and if I, if you go after the third standard deviation, it always will be a smaller area. So it should be a very tiny area at this part because these tiny parts represent the extra 1% or the 0.5%. And so do a sketch. Obviously, always do a sketch with a pencil and then fix it if you want. And remember, it's not a peak at the top. It's sort of a flat. Um, top for the normal distribution and then go down and then you'll get your normal distribution curve. You will only get marks if you show these markings, these red dotted lines to illustrate your mean, first, second and third standard deviation. If you want you can also write and I would actually recommend you write uh, the part so mu plus two sigma, mu plus three sigma, etc. And so you get this normal distribution curve. Be careful with reading the scale as well. Since I picked a scale of 5, I, each point represents 0 0.5. And hence, I need to go two ticks in order to get to 256, for example. So make sure you're reading the scale properly. Now, this is a nicely put, a much better version of the normal distribution curve. And so we can solve the questions. So for part B, it asks to find the probability that a packet contains less than 239 ml. For each probability question, I would recommend you always highlight the area that you need. So for this question, we want packets less than 239 milliliters. Um, 
So I'm going to look at my graph. I actually know that 239 is one of the standard deviations that I, or the one of the um, calculations that I found from the standard deviation. And so I'm going to start using this curve. If you notice that your number is not part of your curve, it actually means you need to use your calculator to find the answers. So 239 is about here. I'm, I'm going to shade the area. Always re-sketch your graph roughly. Um, if it's the second part of the question and you're too far from the beginning, you could do a simple sketch of, well, this is my mean, 255, and I need 239. And so I need this area. So you need to recognize that you are below the mean by two standard deviations. So this is mu minus two standard deviations. So this simple sketch will might actually get you a mark, so always do it. So the probability that a packet contains less than 239 ml, also be comfortable with this notation. I'm going to highlight this area on this graph. So whenever a question asks you for a less than area, so not a range, if it asks for between 240 um, 7 and 263, well, we know that within one standard deviation is 63%, uh, sorry, 68%. And so um, you use the percentages you know. However, because it wants a less than, I'm going to use, I'm going to use the fact that halfway from the mean up to the end, it's 50%. So I'm going to use this 50% um, idea because I have these last end of the tails that I don't know what percentage they could represent. And so I have this 50%, but I don't want these two areas. The 50% includes these two parts, and I want to exclude them. So I don't want this area and this area. Well, these two green areas are a part of the two standard deviation percentage. Uh, the two standard deviation percentage, which is all of this, is actually 95%. So I don't want this 95%, and what I'm going to do, or I actually don't want half of this 95%, so I'm going to divide um, this 95% by 2. So this, these two uh, green areas represent 47.5%. And so back again, I have my 50%, which is all of this area, but I don't want these two areas, which is, um, which represents 20, uh, which represents 47.5%, and this as well is 47.5%. So from this 50%, I'm removing the 47.5% which should give me 2.5%. And remember, because it's probability, you need to write it as uh, decimals. So 2.5% is, is the same as 2.5 divided by 100, which is 0 0.025. And so this tells you that the probability of picking a um, a packet that has less than 239 uh, milliliters is 0 0.025, which makes sense because the mean tends to be at the mean was meant to be at 255, and so this is your answer. Now for part C, um, it asks to find the expected number of packets that contain more than 247. This time we want the expected value. So it's slightly different. You need to find the probability and also multiply it by the expected value. So first let's find the probability and then we'll go through the calculation. So the probability of packets contain more than 247. Again, this is part of the, the standard deviations you found. So 247 is here so you want all of this area up to their positive infinity and so again what this represents is you have your 50% 
from the mean up to here is 50%. And then we're adding an extra part, which is within one standard deviation. So remember, within two, within one standard deviation is 60, 68%. And so within one standard deviation, it's 34%. And this is 34%. So I have 50% up to here, and then I'm adding another 34%. So for part C, I have the probability of a packet being more than um, 247 is 50% plus the 34%, which is equal to 84%, and that as a probability value is 0.84. Now, this is not our final answer because they wanted the expected value. So, to find the expected value, you take your, what I'm going to call the total, and you multiply it by the probability. The total comes from the main question, and in here it's 75 packets. And so 75 packets multiplied by 0 0.84 will give you 63 packets. And so what this tells you is that out of the 75 packets that he tested, we can expect that 63 of them will have a volume more than 247. Okay, so hopefully this makes more sense. Now, um, the next part of this video will go through finding the probability using your graphic display calculator. So make sure you check out that part of the video. The link will be in the description or you can click the link on the video itself.